That's why uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, uh, no, chapter what is it? 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he says, examine yourself and make sure that you are in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. <laughs> examine yourself and make sure you're in the faith. The faith refers to living according to the word of God. Are you living the way God told you to live? Are you doing what God told you to do? And all of it starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. He'll have you thinking, you know what? The enemy is so good at deceiving. He'll have you thinking that God's favorite terror overdo. Yep. When, when the Bible clearly says he's no respect of no no But you do may see something happening in terror life that he wanted, and he'll say, Well, I saw God first. You know, I've been I've been going at this for a long time, and, and I I heard Terry mention it one time, and now he got it. But that's all you heard. You don't know what Terry been doing in the, in, in right. the first place. Right. Right. But the enemy won't tell you that. He just he just show you Terry got it. You see what I'm saying? And you have to be mindful of that kind of stuff. You can't let that garbage come in. When you see your brother get something, you won't start rejoicing. Right. 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 You know why? Because if he did it for Terry, he'll do it for me. He'll do it for you. Right. Right. And one of the ways that you can block it is to start complaining That's and murmuring right. that Terry got. Right. Allow jealousy and envy to get in there. Right. You'll block yourself up every time. Yeah. But it's a thought. It starts with a thought. Amen? Amen. All right. Y'all back in 7 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, I thought I was going to get further than this, dude. This is another part of six, too. You got a reason? Not yet. I ain't even got it. <laughs> 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 reasoning, you know, we, you know, that reasoning a lot of times is based on education. A lot of times we try to reason stuff out, ration stuff out, because we, with our minds, you know, we're smart. And I'm giving you a good example. Now, if you ration it out or reason it out, does it make sense to help the enemy? Nope. Does it make sense to give the enemy food if he's hungry? Nope. Does it make sense to give him water if he's thirsty? Nope. No, no, no. You know, you try to reason it out. That don't make sense. Why would I strengthen him to hurt me? No, sir. Because the enemy want to do your harm. Yes, sir. So, Jesus said, love the enemy. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. If he's hungry, give him food. Well, if I try to reason that out in my rational mind through my natural mind, it don't make sense. Mm. And if I stay on that, you know what happens? When somebody that did me wrong comes and the test comes for me to do them good, I won't pass the test. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't even take it to the point of lying, mm. saying I don't have it, mm. when all the time you got it. And God was just testing to see if you would go through it. He knew you would, mm. so he knew your heart. Yes, he did. You understand? So we have to stay away from that reasoning and, and speculations and all them kind of ideals, different ideals, because they barricade us from the, from the, from the uh, promises and the love of God. Amen. And the word of God. Y'all okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Back to chapter 10. Back to the chapter 10. And verse, well, let's read verse 3 again. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not fleshy, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Verse 5, casting down, your Bible may say imagination, I say arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now we're talking about the way that you win the battle in your mind is to bring every thought captive to the Word of God. Now when we say Christ, I can say the Word of God too. Okay, yeah. I can use I can put the word of God there because in the beginning was the word the word was with God the mm -hmm. word was God. But I can say the word right because I can't have Christ without the word. You know, so I can't live in Christ like I'm supposed to without the word. So I need to bring every thought captive to the word. Why? Because the word of God and we gonna get into it tonight. I ain't gonna have time. The word of God uh, analyzes. Every thought that comes, mm -hmm. and it analyzes the intent of that thought. Right. See, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, thoughts are disguised where we can't see it, but the Word of God gets back into the subconscious and all that stuff, and it analyzes the intent of every thought that comes. Mm -hmm. 
So we need to, but see, you can't, you can't, have, you can't uh, bring it chapter to the Word of God if you don't know the Word of God. That's why you have to read your Bible. Amen? Amen. And he said, the weapons, verse 4, he said, for the weapons of our warfare are not calm, but mighty in God to put in our strong. If you look up the word stronghold, it's defined in the dictionary as a fortress. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about a fortress of thoughts that we done accumulated throughout the years, years of our lives that's back in our subconscious, and the thoughts that the enemy done put there. What I mean by we done accumulated, situations we done been in, that we acted in the flesh in, we never got rid of those thoughts. They didn't just go away. That's why when you got saved, you were still able to curse like you was used to curse. You were still able to fight like you used to fight. You understand what I'm saying? Because those strongholds were there. And even now, in certain situations orchestrated in your life, you'll find one of those fleshy actions coming forth. But it started with a thought because that stronghold is there. Well, here Paul is saying, through God's weapons, we can tear those strongholds down. How do you tear it down? You tear it down by replacing it with something else. You replace those bad thoughts with the thoughts of God's word. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, he says, take no thought by saying. So if I want to tear down the, the strongholds of the devil, I need to own my mouth. Mm -hmm. So I need to say what the word says, because that's how you take a thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the thought comes to be fearful, the way you take that thought is saying, I'm afraid. You just took that thought of being fearful. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But instead of saying that, if the thought comes with, because of a situation that's in your life, and the thought comes for you to be afraid, you come and say, fear is not from God. God did not give me the spirit of fear. I refuse to fear. Mm -hmm. I'll go to uh, one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 41 and 10, where God tells us to fear not. He's with us. Yeah. You start quoting that. You see what I'm saying? And now you're replacing that thought of fear mm -hmm. with the thought of 